What is up? We are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide. I'm the host with the most, Mr. We Are Wrestling himself, the best one Dottie here with... What is going on? We are Wrestling Maniacs worldwide. Uncle Ben, America's favorite uncle, uh, one half of the podcast, back uh, this week. Last week I had to miss it, some things kind of came up, but we had the uh, second command cam here and i hope you guys enjoyed his presence uh got a pretty good uh set of predictions coming your way for this saturday's live event in perth australia for wwe's elimination chamber but before we get into all those juicy details and what we think might happen don take it away buddy that's right and this saturday for the wwe elimination chamber bright up and early the load rager ben he will be live 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm not mm-hmm. going to be a part of this, but I will be probably <laughs> watching it once I wake up. Hell yeah. And before we dive into our predictions for this week, if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already and you're listening to the predictions, give us a five star review, not just any review, a best one review, and download the episode. But if you're watching this over on the We Are Wrestling YouTube channel and you're not a part of, the thousands of subscribers we recommend you to hit that subscribe button now turn on the post notifications videos be coming out of nowhere like an rko and of course you already know the grind is real yeah yeah but yeah because elimination chamber is this saturday nothing will be changing when it comes to the podcast We will be airing it this Saturday, probably after the Elimination Chamber, so definitely stay tuned for that, because we got lots of awesome content coming out, lots of awesome topics we're going to be talking about, but Ben, you know how we do it here when it comes to our pay-per-view premiere live event predictions, we talk about our thoughts on the build up for the pay-per-view premiere live event. So, Ben, what was your thoughts on this build-up going into this year's Elimination Chamber? I mean, obviously, we're, like, deep in the Triple H era, and I'll always fucking... I'll always, you know, give Triple H his flowers, 100%, especially when it comes to his storytelling and booking as of late. Um, you know, obviously, this is probably one of the best build-ups that we've had to the Chamber, and a lot of these people that are in it make a lot of sense. I mean... There's a couple of people that I would have rather be in them, you know, the one men's and women's. There's a couple of people I would have, you know, swapped out. But that for I what it's with. worth, for what it's worth, though, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. Um, I'm a little confused on a couple of things, like build up wise, because there's like so many different like feuds going on, and it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's like taking away from it or like dulling it down by any means, but there's some things that are going to be tweaked out. But then again, I've also noticed that some things don't make sense at first, but by the end of it, I'm like oh okay and we're in mania season so we're in like the most unpredictable season that we're in other than maybe like a couple like stipulations maybe a couple winners but at the same time there's something special about this mania season i don't know what it is but there's something special about it and i don't want i fucking don't want you to say the rock but there's something different about this mania season that makes it feel i do too i i I do too but we'll save that for when we get closer on save it for saturday (laughs) yeah 100 percent. because i feel like he's gonna have some kind of involvement as well um save it for the pod but yeah i think that uh i think the build's been pretty decent I, i wouldn't say that it's perfect but it's pretty decent yeah, I got to agree with that. I feel like it makes sense who's in what. I think that the card isn't bad at all. But I do agree, like, a lot of the side feuds, like, I thought on this card we would at least get Authors of Pain and Carrion versus Street Profits and Bobby. They've oh, been yeah. feuding for the last couple of months. We still haven't gotten pretty much a, a big match yet or... with them. And I feel like that's the only thing about these Triple H Premier Live events that is very tough to get behind. I understand that he wants to showcase the matches more. He doesn't want it to be 12 matches on a card. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like having at least seven matches, I think, is okay. Okay. Maybe yeah, we only got a couple. We have, what, five matches or four matches going four on? Four matches early? and a segment. And a segment. Okay. Can we have what were you having a Logan Paul show or KO show? What's going on? What's the we're segment? having the Grayson Waller effect? 
that honestly makes sense, you know, obviously being Australian, but there's something, something going to happen during that. Something going to happen. Something big is going to happen. And I don't know what yet, but I'm excited for it. Um, we will talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. All right. So with that being said, let's dive into the matches for the WWE Elimination Chamber. And we always want to let all the maniacs know that we're recording this currently on a Wednesday afternoon. So things can change. There is going to be a live press conference on Thursday night. I believe they're going to probably start doing this leading into the premier live events because of how successful like the WrestleMania kickoff was. So starting things off with the WWE Elimination Chamber match card, always have to put a disclaimer out to all the maniacs that we are recording this on a Wednesday afternoon. So if they do add things during the press conference tomorrow night, and SmackDown, yeah, we're recording this on a Wednesday, so we can't go into the future and see what's going to happen. In this case, we are not going to be exposing the script. So, we starting things it. off here, we have the <laughs> Women's Elimination Chamber match. We have Liv Morgan versus Raquel Rodriguez versus Naomi versus Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair versus Tiffany Stratton. Right off the bat, I already see two people that I would have taken right out of it. Two I already of those know. People, Can one, I take a guess? Tiffany Stratton, number one. She's not ready. She just got here. So I'm like, I don't know how you got this opportunity, but bitch, you just got here. I love I love her potential. I loved her showing in the Rumble. I do have a couple moments from NXT that I've seen where I'm like, damn. But, honey, you just got here. You got to get in the back of the line like everybody else. Like, I get you have a huge impact, and you made a very big impact, including a big old slap on your debut. But at the same time, you just got here. I, I, I get, you know, we're, you know, you got so much potential. Some people up in the uppers want to put a fucking rocket ship and send you to the moon. I'm not one of those people, and I'm not convinced yet. The other one, the dog... You're beating a dead horse and you're giving her the John Cena treatment. Get Bianca Belair the fuck out of there. I'm sorry, but get Bianca the oh, fuck out of there. Come dude. on. This is why we need a mid card women's title. I bet what else that. other than what else other than main event shit is Bianca Belair gonna do? Nothing. I don't see her in a fucking tag team unless it's with Jade Cargill and they're doing some kind of like you know power tag team, and that would work. But we need something else for her dog because if she's she's just gonna get the Charlotte the Charlotte Flair treatment, everybody's gonna get sick of her eventually, and then they're gonna be like, oh, let's slap a bandaid on it and turn her fucking heel. You should have did that a year ago. I'm gonna tell this you why I like this. The only I reason I like this is because I think that this is the perfect opportunity to set Bianca Belair versus Jade Cargill up for WrestleMania. Have and Jade Cargill screw Bianca Belair in the chamber match. And I agree. I, I just don't know where that, you know, of where that, how that would work. Just considering, I don't know if there's an angle being teased or built yet, but at the same time, because I wouldn't want it just to be random and for nothing, just because well, on chick. SmackDown this past last Friday on SmackDown, they did have a segment backstage where I believe it was Liv and Bianca and Tiffany. They were arguing while Jade Cargill was looking at the SmackDown contract and Jade Cargill sticked up for Tiffany Stratton. Kind of teasing Fuck. something there with Bianca. It's going to be a heel. So, all right, bet. So, fucking Jade Cargill is going to be a heel. So, I think um, putting Bianca in here does make sense. It does. Because they all could right. set something up. But the thing is, though. But I kind of wish Jade Cargill was in this match, though. I wish it was Jade and not Bianca. And I think, I think one of the main reasons, other than the fact that, again, I'm getting so fucking fatigued with Bianca Belair. Because, again, they can't do anything with her except for main event shit. And it's getting boring as fuck. But I'm also mad as fuck that they are sleeping on Mijin. They're sleeping on her. And they're having her take loss after loss when she carried that fucking match with Bianca. And they still squashed her. That's why I'm like, dude, they WWE does not know what the fuck they have with fucking uh, Mia Yim. They have no fucking idea that they're sitting on gold, bro. I'm sorry, but maybe her promo work needs work. But that chick's in-ring skills are beyond it, bro. She belongs in that chamber. She's a, she's a fantastic performer, but she's not pissed, over with bro. the crowd yet. Which Had I think is why she's probably not Bianca, in it. She would have been. I will say it Had doesn't help that she's Bianca? also 
I will say what doesn't help either is that she's in this group with AJ and the Good Brothers. Well, I will say that no, doesn't help her. AJ and the Good Brothers are done because AJ slapped the shit out of Carl Anderson. So they're done. Well, saying, they just broke them up. No, officially. I'm, I'm saying like within like ever since she like came back to WWE, she's been with them. But it doesn't even show them with her 90% of the time. So I'm like, dude, at this point, you should have had her win and put her in the chamber. She could have gotten over. Nobody gave a fuck about Kofi Kingston until the chamber. Nobody gave a fuck. You got so me there. give her the same fucking treatment and people would fucking be over with her. G even if she didn't win it, give her a Kofi moment. Give her a chance to connect with this crowd because had she beat B Bianca, you know for a fact it would have been a monster pop being like, holy shit, they're finally fucking doing it. And then come the chamber, high spots, close calls, and maybe final three, then loses it. She would have been over as fuck right there, dude. And I'm mad about it. And I think that's another reason why I don't want Bianca in it. And that might be biased, but I also know a million other people that are like, Mia needs to go somewhere else because they're just wasting her again. Why rehire her if you're just going to have her have one good angle, which was her debut? Other than that, they haven't done shit with her. And I'm pissed about it, dude, because I love Mia Yim. Yeah, so, yeah. That that's my know. thing. That's my. But thing, I guess. feel like Bianca shouldn't be the one out of the chamber. If I'm looking at the six women, which I'm gonna pull up the graphic again. Yeah, do it. The one person to me that does like shouldn't USA be in this match Raquel? is Raquel Rodriguez. She just See, came back from a break from injury, and I don't know. I think that she sh they should have waited until maybe after Mania for her to come back. And maybe Either do after something or with after Liv. chamber, or exactly. after chamber, you could have done. And that's another thing. Like I love that lives in it. I'm not crazy about Raquel, but I it's somebody different that really needs some kind of push, even if it's not a main event push, but needs to have some kind of path carved for her. I think her the and Liv. I think they're going to start a feud in this chamber match. I think, think Liv's going to turn heel. I think Becky's going to win. The chamber, obviously, which is obviously, obviously in the Becky. But I think somehow Nia Jax will be in the main event of WrestleMania. Will be in that match as well, and I think we're getting a triple, triple threat. threat. I, I could so. definitely see that being a possibility because the only reason I believe that is because when I'm watching Monday Night Raw, which by the way to the Maniacs, you can check out my reactions. They always come out mm -hmm. on Tuesdays immediately after Raw. I will say during the segments with the women's chamber. They did have Nia Jax literally squash them like stink bugs. Yeah, I and know. They made her look insanely strong. So I definitely could see so, her finding a way into the match. I think, I think honestly, she's going to take Raquel it. out or something. I think she's going to take Raquel out or something and put herself in the match. But I, I, this is another thing where I'm just like, I'm kind of pissed because I felt like she should have been there in the first place. Like I would have rather Nia than live. I would have but rather I, Nia than Liv. Yeah, but when it comes you know? to Nia versus Rhea, I do love that match a lot. Oh, I, I, I love it more big, than Because we do need a big match for Rhea in her home country. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a big match. But getting back into the chamber, though, obviously, we all know who's going to win. Becky Lynch, right there, that's money. Even if you're sick of seeing Becky on TV, which I know... You've expressed that on the podcast the last couple of weeks. Here on TV, just in the main event. In the main event picture, but yeah, we all know WrestleMania. That's where they want the big time stars, and obviously, there's money on the table with the man versus mommy. There's money there to be made, yeah, and I think realistically, I it like they're gonna they want to put their top stars on the biggest stage of them all. And there's no way Becky is not going for the championship on the biggest stage. Especially because, think about it. The past year, Ben, they've been teasing this. They've been having the stare downs while Becky was fighting her way back into the picture with the whole Trish feud and Zoe Stark's feud. They've been having the stare downs with Becky and Rhea throughout the year. I think that this is going to be a big time match. I think a lot of people are going to go into it with low expectations, but I think a lot of people are going to realize why Becky is in the position that she's in when her and Rhea, they steal the fucking I'll only show. be cool with it. I'll only fucking be cool with it if Rhea retains. That's the only way I'll be cool with it. I do hope Rhea Becky retains doesn't need as well. It. Becky does not fucking need it because it's just going to get boring again. But I will say one thing about this women's chamber match. I am excited to see Naomi in this. 
I think that I we're too. definitely going to be getting some cool spots with her in this. Match. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Same with Liv. But mm-hmm. overall, I'm definitely think that it's a solid lineup. I would have changed at least Raquel. That's who I would have changed. I know you would change Bianca. But man, we got a stacked women's division. We got a stacked men's division. I just what a time to be it. a fan. There's a lot of things that we can shuffle around, but it's going to be a great match. But we both do have Becky Lynch winning. Yep. Moving on now to our next match on the card. It is for the WWE Tag Team Championships. Damian Priest and Finn Balor defending the titles against Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. I honestly could give a fuck less about this match, and I'm being dead serious. <laughs> I, I could give a fuck less about Tell this Tell us match. why. I don't care about Pete Dunne, and I don't care about Tyler Bate. I really don't care about either of them, and I also don't care about Finn and Damian as tag team champions. I really Damian don't. Right. I I like them as single stars way more than I like them as a tag team or in a stable. I feel like Judgment Day is starting to finally kind of uh, get some fatigue there, um, unless something big happens. That, like that's they need to why, lose a member, they need to have some turmoil, something. Dude, that's why I've been so mad watching Raw because I think our truth would have been perfect in the Judgment Day. They could have definitely, it could have been definitely just as good as Sammy being a part of the Bloodline. With our truth, if they don't, because if it they was did it working, right, had that same care. If they had that it same was care, working. and boom, it was working. So disappointed in that. I'm just sick of these championships. We need them to be split. Right now, the tag team division in WWE is stacked on both Raw and SmackDown, and it's just a waste of time to just have one championship. Finn Balor and Damian Priest. They barely show up to SmackDown anyways, and they're supposed to be the unified tag champs. That's what I'm and saying. like so I Pete Dunn and Tyler man. Bate, don't get me wrong, they are fantastic professional wrestlers. But they just became a tag team. Pete Dunn just got his name back. And mm-hmm. let's be real. The casuals, they don't care for Pete Dunn. They don't care for Tyler Bate. And I think Mm -hmm. that there's other tag teams out there that definitely deserve this opportunity a little bit more while they build up their tag team work because they just became a team. Like I think a month ago, I know I saw that they're already getting tag title shots. Mm -hmm. That's again, like this is the same thing with the women's division, the tag team division. I would be hyped if they knew how to fucking use them. Yeah, and they have so many good tag teams on both Raw and WWE SmackDown. tag teams, bro, are not the same as they used to be. They're not. That is true, but you do have to admit, to Triple H. My favorite. Yeah, but you do have to admit, Triple H has done a pretty good job with making these tag teams. It's just the At problem is sense. a lot of these teams aren't being showcased as good because they need championships around. That, like, never, having a Raw there's... tag title and a SmackDown tag title. Would definitely do wonders for teams that like and, Pretty Deadly, the, the Alpha is, Academy, but the all these good teams. Is, but the problem is, no tag team shit is ever done. There's only one tag team match a fucking week, realistically, on both shows. Like one out of both shows. Like they don't do tag team shit enough, and Sometimes that's an issue. Get to. Like I said, man, it just I agree. Better than Vinny Mac is <laughs> for sure, but. Tag teams aren't what they used to be. It's like they still don't care about tag teams. Like uh, like Vinny Mac left and they know. still don't give a shit. The Creed Brothers, dangerous fucking move, finishing move. You got fucking DIY, not over as fuck with the crowd nearly as much as they And our truth getting them over that whole DX thing. <laughs> but they need our truth though. They can't stand on their own. That's my yeah, issue. Yeah, but there's a lot. Like, yeah, again, but you could say that about a them. lot of other talent though, too. I I have, and I'm very vocal about it. That's why I'm saying, like, th- even with Vince out the door, they still haven't shown the tag teams any fucking love. They haven't because they would have split these belts up a long time ago and we would have had actual tag team matches, five star tag team matches again, and we would get more shit. We'd get more ladder matches. We'd be getting more fucking. Ah, uh, I'm just frustrated in that perspective because tag team competition used to be some of my favorite WWE entertainment because it was exciting. And it's I will fun. say it really doesn't help either. You said this in the beginning. Damian Priest and Finn Balor are just way better single competitors. They Damian are. Priest has a money in the bank that we're not even going to talk about. Who's cashing it in? Like, fuck. <laughs> Wouldn't you think like he would cash it in when Rollins is hurt? I, oh, 
Fuck, bro. I just thought of something, but I need to tell you now or else I'm going to forget it and it's going to no, be gone. Go ahead. Just say it. Just say it. I already know what you're going to say. I think he's going to cash in at WrestleMania against whoever wins. I think he's going to cash in at WrestleMania and Damian Priest is going to be taking it for that for night one. I 100% think he's taking it for night one because they said it wasn't anytime soon. And that was six months ago. We're uh, we're literally approaching mania and I don't think they're going to have another failed cash in three times in a row. Yeah, they've been having failed cash-ins for the last three years. You're right on that. Mm -hmm. He's going. All right, so it. who do we have winning this match? Oh, it, it sucks because I want to care so much more than I actually do. But I'm going to go with Finn and Damian until there's something that happens or they can split up the titles or there's a better team out there that can actually give it some justice. The last team that really gave those titles justice was the Usos. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, Kevin and Sammy, they had the big moment, but they never really did anything with the titles afterwards. And it was too short. It was way too short of a run. It was only like, what, three weeks, a month, maybe? No, they had the titles for a few months. Really? It didn't feel like that. And that's show. That well, yeah, no, everything. that's the problem. It didn't feel like that because I think Kevin Owens was dealing with, I want to say, like an elbow injury at that time. Yeah. There was something going on, but... Unfortunate. I definitely have Damian Priest and Finn Balor winning. I think that this is just a way for Same. WWE to show how talented Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate are and to give them some more recognition. I think that the, the people that could take the titles off of them, I could see them trying to do our truth and Miz. Maybe DIY yeah. could take the titles, but we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. I think there's going to be no title change. See, I would prefer that at this point. Like, at this point, I'd prefer D DIY, you know, because at least they're an established tag team. They have a history. They're both solid fucking wrestlers. The only thing is that they're having a really hard time connecting with the crowd. And it's it's honestly hurtful. Even with Johnny Gargano, he is not over at all compared to NXT. I will say the last couple weeks with our truth the fans are starting to, they're really starting to get behind them slowly but surely. But I, I think putting the tag titles record. on them, that's a situation where the championship could make them. And I think yeah. that, like, even with Gunter, when he won, he won the Intercontinental Championship, at first he wasn't over with the crowd. But through time, having these five-star classics, he was able to get over with the crowd. Dog. And now he's having such a legendary title run. Doug, I... Before we go on to the next match, I just want to give my boy Gunther a shout out real quick because I have not seen a heel of this stature in a very, like, even on the go, a very maturing heel. Like, even, like, his mic skills, so much better. He's entertaining. Like, he'll smile every once in a while and throw people off, but then he goes right back to doing his shit. That dude is going to be world champion immediately within the next couple of years. We could, I, I'm telling you this right now. I'm looking either the third quarter of 24 or the first quarter 25. Like a hundred percent, that dude will be a world world champion sooner than later. Highly agree with you on that. Yeah, and like his title run has been so long, but it hasn't been repetitive, and it hasn't felt lukewarm like somebody I know. <coughs> Fucking Roman Reigns. <laughs> uh, all right even well. Seth has been great you know and i just i love also before i end up my thing with gunther i also love that they're making him more empathetic having him give seth his flowers even though he's a heel and i really dig that and i love i love the personality we're getting out of but him. here's why say. but here's why it's so entertaining ben because this is just a great way to build something for the future because Triple H is looking at all of this stuff as long term. So having Becky and Rhea, there's the perfect example. Having them do those stare downs for the last year and a half. It's going to add so much more to the storyline when we get to that match. And I could definitely see the same thing happening with Gunter and Seth Rollins. Him, you know, giving Rollins his flowers. Just a great way to start their potential feud that's going to be iconic for years to come i think eventually because obviously let's get real drew's winning it at mania 
Like there, let's get real. Drew's gonna win it. Seth is gonna be Seth's gonna be gone for at least a little over a year. You know, he's gonna be gone for some time, and honestly, that's time much needed for him and us fans to really appreciate him when he does come back. But I'm telling you this right now: when he comes back, Gunther will be world heavyweight champion. I'm telling you that right now. When he comes back, expect Gunther to win the world title from Drew at some point. And when Seth returns. That is the first person he is facing, and I will welcome it with open arms because that is going to be a five. That is going to be a ten star match, a hundred percent. I'm fucking I could excited. See, I could see that headlining WrestleMania 41 mm-hmm. because Drew could lose the championship by then because CM Punk comes back, and there yep. you go. You got Punk and Drew because we all know that's going to be the next feud once Punk comes back, and that's going to be a good one. Telling you this right now, WrestleMania 41 night one is going to be Seth Rollins versus Gunther. Night two is going to be LA Knight versus whoever has the title at the time for the Universal. Yep. Telling you that right now. Moving on now to our next match. Well, no, it's not a match. We have a segment, the Grayson Waller effect with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes and Seth freaking Rollins. Take two. Okay, I did not know (laughs) that Seth and Cody were the guests of the Grayson Waller effect. So you already know some people might be in Perth too. I think that we might be getting something with The Rock and maybe Roman or maybe some of the bloodline. Like there's going to be something because having Seth involved too says it all over it. There is some crazy shit that's going to happen in Perth, and I apologize. I'm going to try my hardest not to spoil it for you for seeing it, and the first thing that you see in the morning is a spoiler. Oh, my fucking God, the Grayson Waller effect. I apologize ahead of time if I can't contain myself, but I'm going to try. This could go any direction, man. This could go any direction because even this segment alone could start a feud going towards Mania. So I'm fucking hyped. Dude, I think it, I think Drew might. No, Drew's in the match. Never mind. Here's what I see happening. I feel like we could be getting possibly the tag match for Mania 41. I think Cody okay. and Seth could call out Roman and The Rock for night one. That's a real possibility. We get a tag match there. And I'll Rollins will have two matches that night or you can have him wrestle night two with the heavyweight championship so mm-hmm. there's ways to do it i think we might be getting that that's a real possibility because match? i don't think the rock i don't think the rock is going to just be by roman's side and that's it for mania i think the rock does want to get in the ring and do something so i think that this is the best way to not only protect the rock because you're going to be putting him in a tag match obviously he'll be teaming with roman it's also a great way to build up night two with Cody versus Roman, the main event. So you could oh, definitely, yeah. there's so many ways, there's so many twists, there's so many turns that could happen by doing that. So I could see them making that announcement during this yeah. segment. Either the segment or, yeah, they could they could start something, ignite something during the segment, but I think they would make the announcement the following night. No, 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 never mind, never mind, never mind. That's at the chamber. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> Press conference is tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this. I don't I don't think at WrestleMania Seth Rollins is turning on Cody. It's not happening. No, I don't think he's gonna be turning on Cody. If anybody's doing any kind of turning on anybody, we already, you know The Rock's turning on Roman. At the, uh, yep, in WrestleMania. And then WrestleMania 41, we get a whole year build, no championship involved, because Cody's going to finish his story at WrestleMania, and nothing can go wrong this year. I'm hoping. I'm praying, man. I'm praying. <laughs> Me too. But I do think that this will be a fun segment. I'm glad that Grayson Waller is able to show his abilities in front of his home country as well. I think that putting him with two of the biggest baby faces right now in WWE is a great decision. I am curious to see what they do though. Cause I feel like Austin theory, we haven't seen him in a minute, so he could definitely be involved here. Somehow Cody and Seth could probably attack both of them. We're just gonna have to wait and see. Yeah. I'm honestly excited for whatever happens during the segment. So it's going to be a good one. Me as well. But moving on now to our next match on the card. It is for the Women's World Heavyweight Championship. Mommy, Rhea Ripley defending the title against Nia Jax. God, I'm not going to lie. Nia looked real good in that picture. Um, Sorry. Um, 
Yeah, obviously we know the outcome. Um, I don't think that they would be as ballsy to do some crazy shit as, you know, have her drop it and then get it back before Mania. I don't think that they're going to do that shit. Um, I think that this is going to be a good showing for Nia Jax. Um, we already know that Mommy's getting a massive fucking pop in Australia. You already know that that pop is going to be massive. That's going to be like... Rhea's a lot bigger of a star this time around. So I'm really, really excited about that. It's going to be a great showing for Nia Jax. I think we're going to see uh, where it's going to go towards Mania. Because obviously, I don't think this whole thing with Rhea and Nia Jax is slowing down at all. I think that they're, I think Nia will be involved at Mania somehow. I think even in the match. Here's um, one possibility that they could do. If they really do want to have this triple threat match happen at Mania, which I don't think it's going to happen, I do think that Mommy's going to retain the championship at Chamber. Becky's going to win. Gonna fuck her. But here's what they could do if they wanted to give us that triple threat. They could have Nia Jax beat Rhea in her home country, get massive heat for it. Whoever wins the chamber match is already going against the women's world champion. And Rhea, she loses the title. She needs a rematch. So there you go. Nia goes into Mania as a transitional champion, defends it against Rhea versus Becky. But we all know that yeah. ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah that, that would be very odd. Um, so no, <laughs> don't get too excited. The only way that I could see Nia getting put into the match at Mania is if Becky comes out and screws Nia out of winning. And Nia somehow involves herself in the uh, chamber match after Be- Becky wins it. So... That's the, the only way I can re- see that happening. But also, too. too, the only reason I don't see this happening is because there's been a lot of rumors going around that the Raw WWE World Championship is going to be a triple threat match. Rollins is going to be defending the title against Drew McIntyre versus Sami Zayn. I've been hearing that going around a lot, so I don't see them doing two triple threat matches on the Raw brand. That's the only thing Sammy that's Zayn's throwing me off. Part of it. I don't think Sami Zayn's going to be a part a trip part of the triple threat. I, I don't think it's going to happen because I don't, I don't see know, I, man. I, I, these, these little interviews he's been doing. It's <laughs> they're teasing it a little bit. They were teasing him winning the Universal too. So I just you know I, I and for a second there I could have believed it, but now I'm like, if Sammy were to get into it, I don't think anybody would really be behind him. I, I don't know. Like I really like I know that people would be behind him, but I don't think he would be as hot as he was back when he left the bloodline. And that was the time to pull the trigger. If he was going to win any title. Yep. Um, you know, I just, I don't see Sammy. I see more somebody else. Maybe I see more Jay Uso being a part of that shit than Sammy. So I just, I don't know. But then Jay Uso is already having a match with his brother. Uh, yeah. And his brother's going to uh, probably interfere if he goes into that match. So he can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. But now, as Jim far as fucking, cost him three times, three championships. That's crazy. In a matter of months, which is fucking insane. But yeah, I 100% don't know what else is going to happen in this match other than it's going to be a good showing for Nia Jax and another a- accolade for Rhea, and especially in her hometown, which is going to make money. So here's one thing that I do think is going to happen within this match. I think that. Nia Jax is finally going to get the respect from fans. I think that this is going to be a great match. I think that this is going to be probably Nia's best match in her career. And I think that a lot of people are going to start giving her her flowers after her showing in Australia. Bro, ever since she came back, she has had massive in-ring improvement. And she looks great, though, physically, too. Like, she looks like she's yes. dropped some weight. She's starting to, like, fucking be able to, like, keep up more stamina-wise in the ring. She's able to do a lot more. She's able to move around a lot more. Much I'm excited for her, too. you know? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm excited for it, And I think that this is going to be part of a huge redemption arc. And I've been saying this. Nia versus Rhea is going to be a classic because it's going it's be to give Rhea more recognition for her championship run. Going against somebody who's already established a former women's champion like Nia Jax, who's a monster in the women's division. Yep. This is going to add more credit to Rhea's run, which we have to admit in the beginning, it was very slow because obviously they're trying to develop Dominic and the Judgment Day. 
Mm -hmm. But she has picked up a lot of momentum since. And I think her going against Nia Jax, this is a great decision. Bro, she's got a China complex about her, bro. Like, the, she's the 10th wonder of the world. <laughs> she is the 10th wonder of the world, bro. Uh, fucking Rhea is what Roman is not. A genuinely good defending heel champion. Like, she's Ooh, I don't know. I... I can't put heel and Rhea in the same sentence. I can't. Because Rhea's it seems heel, like in the women. Yeah, with the Judgment Day, but like with the women's division, she's been more of a baby face than a heel, it feels like. What like makes she you does say interact that? more with the fans. She, I don't know. It just seems like she's more, she acts more like a baby face when it comes to feuding with Nia Jax and other heels. And well, he in. also, but the thing is though, Rhea Ripley is also very popular right now. She is a hundred percent a heel, but when the line is blurred, you just know that she's doing her job and she's killing it. She's a lot more matured about it. She's a natural. Now she's literally a legend on the roster. She's a future hall of famer now. Like she's doing this shit through the ropes like Randy Orton would. Like everything is convincing. She is a larger than life character now. She's the fifth horsewoman, bro. Rhea is the fifth horsewoman, unannounced horsewoman. Like she is big. And that's why it feels like she's getting baby face receptions because you love to hate her. And a lot it's of that a, it's love a stone, is it's out a stone cold there. situation with the attitude. Precisely. Era. Precisely. That's exactly what it is. You can still love him and cheer for him, but he's still an asshole. There's nothing that changes that. You just love to hate this person. Yeah, no, you couldn't have said any better. And honestly, it's time. I think that we need to put Rhea. We need to put her in the horse women. We got five. Yep. At one yeah, point with the horse. The with, with, at one point with the horsemen, I think we had like 10 or 12 members. So Rhea Ripley, she's the fifth member. But well, with I mean, that being said, or, or or we can do one better. We can take Sasha right out and put Rhea in. No. Right, on to the next. No, nope, not happening. I I know you have to get your you had to get your little freaking Sasha shot in. Congratulations, you got it in. But I'm now sorry, we're gonna get into the main event. We're talking talent. Rhea's a lot more talented than Sasha, bro. <laughs> I am not getting into this. All right. So with that being said, let's get into the main event match for WWE Elimination Chamber. We have the men's chamber match. The winner of this will receive a shot at the so WWE cool. World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 40. We have Kevin Owens versus Bobby Lashley versus Randy God. Orton versus Drew McIntyre versus the Maverick Logan Paul versus LA Knight. Yeah. The fact that LA Knight and Logan Paul are in the same match, that is what's going to set up fucking Mania. That right there, the, the fact US that they title. are in the same match yeah. is, yes, that that right there, I'm telling you this right now, the, the fucking uh, SmackDown after fucking... Uh, after Elimination Chamber, they're going to start the feud right there. I'm telling you that shit right now. If um, Cam, and Cam, if you're listening to this WWE Elimination Chamber's predictions, I told you so. WrestleMania, we're getting Logan versus LA Knight. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, now it's going to make sense, buddy old pal. That's right. I just had to say that. I'm going to refrain from commenting on, on that shit because we've been talking about it on this channel for what over almost a fucking year now. Um, a hundred percent. It's going to be LA Knight, And I think LA Knight is going to be the person that eliminates Logan Paul, which is going to start the whole thing. I think Logan Paul is going to come out talking hella shit. And then LA Knight's going to obviously come out and then big feud, uh, leading into mania. Um, it's a stacked list of people in this chamber, bro. Like there, it's the going to be fine matches. Oh my god, dude! Like, yeah, AJ fucking... Styles was in there. Sami Ugh. Zayn was in there. Like, it was so unpredictable going like into these prediction, like into these predictions for like the qualifying matches. Even Dirty Dom, I thought, could have an opportunity in this. Like, they all made sense. Who is in it? I thought, oh, uh, Big Bronson Reed, he was going to be in it because he's from Australia. Like, it was very unpredictable. He's, uh, I think, I think he's from New Zealand. But then again, New Zealand and Australia are kind of hand in hand. So, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, dude, I, it is a stacked fucking match in that chamber, dude. Like, I I don't know who to pick. Like, I know, like, obviously who's gonna. But if I, if it wasn't predictable and we didn't know who was going to face Seth, I wouldn't know who the fuck to pick, bro, because there is so much potential in that match. Let's pull up the graphic one more time, bro. <laughs> 
this is a stacked fucking yeah, match. Yeah, like even from Randy all the way to LA Knight, fire. From Randy to fucking Kevin Owens, fire. I feel like the only one that kind of is doesn't really belong in there or doesn't feel like the belong is Lashley. I, I like agree Lashley because he's feuding with Karrion yeah. Cross. It doesn't make yeah. sense. Like they should be having sense. they they really should be having a six man tag match on this card. Should be Lashley saying. and the Street Profits versus Karrion and Authors of Pain. As a matter of fact, I would have switched out Judgment Day's match for that instead. <laughs> I would have switched out entirely for that. Yeah, but they could add that in there. Five matches in a segment. I think that's totally fine. Yeah, but regardless, Lashley just does not belong in there. But either or, dude, I don't know what the fuck is going to happen in this match. Like, this is a match that I can't predict spots. I can't predict well, other than maybe L.A. and fucking um, L.A. and uh, Logan. Logan. I can see Randy and Drew. Kevin Owens and Lashley. I, I don't know. Kevin Owens doesn't even feel really feel like he belongs in there either. <laughs> So I just, yeah. I, it was weird, you know? Well, you know, we're going to get a spot with Kevin and Logan. Oh, and Logan. Obviously, oh. they have a feud as well going on. Absolutely. I think Logan eliminates Kevin. And then right after LA el- eliminates Logan. Yeah. They'll okay. do, they'll do some that. type of, some type of bullshit there. I think Randy's going to eliminate LA. Yeah, this is going to, oh my, there's so many ways that this can go. There's so many I just ways. realized something. This is going to be a fun match. LA Knight and Bobby Lashley never faced each other ever in a ring. I just realized that. And Impact Kevin Wrestling, Owens. I think they did, but not in WWE. Oh, I, I didn't know. I forgot that fucking, that uh, Bobby was in Impact for a little bit. I forgot. The walking Armageddon, man. Yeah, I forgot about that shit. Um, Kevin Owens feels days, a little so out of probably, place. Yeah. And Kevin's on his way out of WWE soon, right? Or something like that? Like, no, he signed an extension. Deal. Oh, he did? Oh, just an yeah. extension, though? Yeah, I think he Kevin Owens, he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Maybe, like, probably, like, 25, maybe? I don't know. His contract details. Okay. But I definitely yeah. think that this is a very good card. There is other people I would have rather had in here. Oh, but dude, I can name a few. Honestly, but honestly, I'm okay with this. I'm not mad at all. And the only thing that makes sense is Drew McIntyre winning this. And I think and it's that's the thing. Happen. And I think it is too. I'm almost positive. It's going to happen. Hey, there, the there, there's only there gotta be a reason he beat Cody Rhodes on Monday night. Raw. My biggest issue with this show. And it's a, it's a pretty big issue. Predictable. I hate how predictable it was. I hate how predictable it was. You know, it just, there's no like scrambling. Like, I don't know what's going to happen in the matches, but to know who's going to win based on storyline, it just, it's too predictable. You know, now, if you really wanted to throw me out for a fucking solid, what would shock me is if they switched positions and they decided to have LA Knight win it and go against Rollins and they ended up having Drew versus Logan. <laughs> like, I would, that is what would surprise me. Yeah, I would be, but I that ain't be happening. mad, but at the same time, I wouldn't be like, all right, now how are we going to make this make sense? <laughs> you know, like it just, I don't know, man, but it just, I hate the predictability of it. But other than that, it's going to be a banging show. There's no denying it. Yeah, this card is very predictable, but I think WWE really doesn't care because they just want to have a strong, they want to have a strong show going into the chamber. And I think that this show is going to deliver. I think that it's going to be a great card. I think the matches are going to be great, but it is very predictable because obviously we're going into WrestleMania and what happens during this premier live event is going to affect WrestleMania 40. It's directly setting up WrestleMania 40. This is like, the come last on now. Like, like, I'm going to pull this graphic up right now. Like, come on now. Do you think Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate are going to WrestleMania as the fucking tag champs? It's not happening. No. It's not happening. Uh, if not the tag champs, are, if, if the tag team titles are even on the fucking line at Mania, because they never are, except for last year. Yeah, they had like a four way tag for Mania. I hope, here's what I hope does happen, speaking of the tag team titles. Here's what I hope happens. After Elimination Chamber, on Raw, we can get Adam Pearce, Nick Aldis, Triple H, and we finally vacate the tag titles, separate them, and we can maybe crown, we can crown one tag champ on one of the Knights of Mania, and then the other, have Damian and Finn defend the titles. They're on Raw, so I'm assuming SmackDown tags would be vacant. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I just... 
we gotta figure out something something quick with those titles. That's it. Like I don't care what we do, just figure it out quick. I agree. So, is there any other predictions that you do have going into this chamber card before we close this off? The second half is probably going to be the most lit show. <laughs> I think the second half is where it's going to really pick up. Uh, but in terms of like what could happen or, you know, anything like that. No, I, I think that this is a, uh, they're officially like, this is the last stop before mania. Now we're solidifying all feuds, all matches. And we're at the last leg in the final build towards Mania. We have a month until mania now four weeks. So everything is solidified as of Sunday. So I mean, Saturday rather. So I'm excited. Yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see. I will say I will add one more thing into the men's elimination chamber that I did forget to say. What I do think Karrion Cross will screw Bobby Lashley in this. I can and see I think that. Maybe, and I think maybe they're waiting to have this match happen at WrestleMania, which honestly I would love for Karrion Cross to get that moment. So Yeah, Mania they better They better be it. building for a premier live event match because... This has been going on for too long. I think they should have had a six man during this, but it is what it is at this point. I think that yeah, this man. is going to be a great, like you said, second half of the show. I think it's going to be a slow start, but it's going to pick up, I think. Yeah, sure. But to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide, let us know in the comment section below your predictions going into WWE Elimination Chamber. It might even be a comment of the week if you put the comment in like right fucking now, the day you're like right watching now. this or listening to like this. Right, right now. So comment down below your predictions. If you guys enjoyed the Elimination Chamber predictions, make sure to smash that like button now. If you're not, we are Wrestling Maniac yet already, and you're listening to the predictions. Give us a five-star review, not just any review, a best one review, and download the episode. But if you're not a We Are Wrestling Maniac yet already, over on the YouTube channel, lots of awesome content over there. Subscribe, turn on the post notifications. The link's down in the description below. You can go follow Uncle Ben and myself over on our social medias and other YouTube pages. Over on my channel, I do toy hunts and toy reviews. Over on Ben's channel, he does music reactions and video game stuff. You can check all that out, all the links down below. And of course, to all the We Are Wrestling Maniacs out there worldwide, Ben will be live this Saturday in the morning, up and bright. Oh he's going to be eating some cereal, Ooh. breakfast. Oh, he's going to have a great time with you guys. This live watch fun. along for the chamber. But to all the Maniacs, we are taking over. Peace.